All right. Hi, everyone. My name is um, Eddie Lee. I'm from Fortify Software, and I'm going to talk about comparing application security tools. Uh, my talk's going to be pretty packed, so I'm just basically going to speed talk through this, and then I might breathe through it. So um, bear with me. So the, the agenda for today's talk is I'm just going to give a brief intro to my experiment about comparing application security tools, uh, go into the methodology and how you can reproduce your own experiments, and um, go into the results of my experiment, and then go into conclusions. So uh, what I did in this experiment was actually I used two of the market-leading dynamic pen testing tools for web applications. I used a static code analyzer, a source code analyzer, and I used a dynamic test tracing tool. tool. Um, I'll talk about these tools on the next slide. Uh, the application I scanned was actually an open source Java-based blogging application. Uh, you can find it on SourceForge. Uh, initially, I chose this application because uh, I thought it would be really easy to, to, to scan with all these tools, but it, it actually turned out that um, it was more difficult than I thought. It was, all, it was more time consuming than I thought. Uh, my original plan was to scan a bunch of applications with a bunch of tools and find a bunch of vulnerabilities, but that, was, that proved to be overly ambitious. So for today's talk, I'm just going to talk about the results for one application. Um, so I basically took these tools and I scanned, uh, I used them out of the box with little configuration. So basically for the dynamic pen testing tools, I, I gave the tools a URL, a, a lo some login information, and I let it run. Um, and in some cases, I, I ran them in, in manual mode as well. And then I compared the findings from each of the tools. So how do these tools work? Well, for the dynamic uh, testing tools, first what they do is they fuzz web input. Um, they basically crawl web applications, uh, looking for all sorts of web forms. And when it finds all those forms, it'll actually try to fuzz the inputs. Like, say, if it's testing for cross-site scripting, it'll try to inject some kind of um, script tags. If it's uh, looking for SQL injection, then they inject a single quote. And the, the way it finds these kind of vulnerabilities is usually signature-based or behavioral matching. Um, signature-based for, say, cross-site scripting, it'll look to see if the, um, the fuzz string was reflected back by the application. Um, for SQL injection, it'll look for, say, certain error messages like SQL exception or something like that. Uh, these dynamic pen testing tools also have a couple modes of, uh, uh, that you can run them in. You can run them first in auto crawl mode, basically point, click, point and click mode. You give the tool a URL and some login information and you press go and the tool will try to find vulnerabilities in the app. Um, generally that's not very thorough, so they also have a, a manual crawl mode where a human or in this case me, I actually crawl the, uh, the web application trying to give the tool an idea of what kind of page flow the application had. Um, and then the tool would actually take over and, and perform an auto crawl after that. So these manual craw crawls are generally more thorough in their testing. With the source code analyzer, these tools actually have uh, a couple analyzers within, within them themselves. Uh, for example, uh, data flow uh, analyzer, which basically looks at um, source code. It knows when malicious input comes in from some source API, and when it, tra it traces that input throughout the program, throughout the source code, and it knows when it reaches a specific sync API, a security sensitive sync. So in the case of, say, SQL injection, it knows when there's input coming in from the web, and it knows that that input, that string, reaches a, say, database uh, API. Uh, control flow is basically the analysis of a sequence of events in your code. Uh, so this may be certain things like uh, looking for a null pointer dereference. If you have a method that returns uh, a null value and then you use that, that, um, that value without checking to see if it's null, it, it will find bugs like that. The semantic analyzer uh, is basically like a, a super grep that will look for dangerous functions, things like that. Um, the dynamic test tracing tool. This is kind of a new tool. Uh, the way it works is actually uh, through bytecode instrumentation on, say, Java or .NET code. Uh, basically what it does is it injects your compiled web app with uh, monitors. Uh, these monitors actually run and, and monitor the application while you're running your dynamic testing tools, your pen testing tools. So it actually will observe uh, fuzzing input coming into the application and it will watch to see if that data reaches sensitive APIs in your web app. Um, so you do run that in conjunction with your uh, pen web pen testing tools. So methodology. Well, basically, this is how you would reproduce these experiments on your own. Uh, download the source code and build and deploy the application. That sounds pretty straightforward, but generally uh, uh, things don't always build uh, when, when you download them from, uh, from say, SourceForge. 
Um, but once you do uh, deploy your application, you got to make sure you know how to undeploy your application cleanly. Uh, so for example, if you, your application requires a database, you need to be able to restore the database after a, a pen test because uh, the data, the first input from your pen test may affect results from, um, from in a subsequent pen tests. So you want to really clear the, the database between runs. Um, so when you run the scanner in auto crawl mode, you just want to make sure the application is don't break. So while you, you're running your, your pen test tools for the first time, you basically want to keep checking the web app to make sure that it's still running and nothing is broken. Uh, basically, you want to check certain areas of the, of the web app just to make sure uh, it, it functions correctly. Uh, if you do find that the web app breaks, you have to stop your auto crawl testing, uh, go back, reconfigure the, the scanner, and, and test again. And be sure to clear your database be before you retest. And that can be a really tedious process, but um, uh, the configurations and settings will carry over to your, your next test, which is the manual crawl mode. So when, after you finish your auto crawl mode, you want to go into your manual crawl mode, which basically means you browse through all the pages of the web app, and then you let the web scanner uh, take over from there. Of course, after you've, you've got your, you finish your scans, you want to verify the results. So what I did was I manually verified the results. A lot of times these tools will give you, will say there's a lot of vulnerabilities over here, but um, it may, they may be false positive. And you, and you just want to weed out those false positives. And also make a note of the false positive rate in case you want to compare tools to see what kind of false positives uh, they have. And finally, you want to normalize the results. Uh, Different tools report vulnerabilities differently. Say for the dynamic pen testing tools, uh, they will report vulnerabilities based on a URL and parameter basis, whereas the source code analyzers will report vulnerabilities on a uh, file name line number basis. Uh, for my experiment, I actually chose to normalize vulnerabilities based on a, a source code file and line number basis. Um, running your source code analyzers. Well, there's not much to it. Uh, basically, you get your source code, you point your scanner at it, tell it where the libraries and dependencies are, and you tell it to go. Uh, just make sure you're running, you're scanning the same source code that, that, you, that you use to de uh, deploy your application or compile your application in the dynamic testing. Again, verify the, the results uh, via manual testing and weed out the false positives and record the false positive rate and normalize the results. Um, with the dynamic tracing tool, uh, the way it works is first you instrument the compiled uh, code. You basically inject it, the code with monitors. Um, then you deploy the instrumented code. And then you tell the application you want to start recording. So when you, after you tell it to start recording, you run your dynamic test tools on it. And uh, all these monitors will start recording interactions between your fuzzer and, and the code. After the test is done, you stop recording. And again, verify results, uh, record false positives, and normalize the results. Okay, here, this is a big table. I know most of you can't read it. This is in your slides uh, on the C DEF CON CD if you want to reference that. Um, but let me just go over briefly um, what you see here. On the left, you'll actually see vulnerability information. And on the right, you'll see which, uh, which tools actually found um, each vulnerability. The red, the red X means that a specific uh, the vulnerability was found by that tool only in that column. A black X means that uh, the vulnerability was found by multiple tools. So let me just go through the first line uh, to help you guys understand this table more in depth. Here, uh, the vulnerability occurs in the file blog entry.jsp on line number 16. To access it via the web, you would go to the URL save blog entry.secureaction. And to actually exploit this cross-site scripting vulnerability, you would uh, manipulate the title parameter. And in this case, uh, the vulnerability was found by uh, tool 1B and tool 2B. Uh, I'm not naming the tools here because I don't really want to bias anybody into thinking that one tool is better than the, uh, than the next. Um, uh, these tools will perform differently based on your own environment. So just because a specific tool uh, looks like it performs well on, my, on this application, it may not be the case for your own application. So really, you've got to uh, run these experiments on your own to see how they perform in your own environment. Um, again, so going back to this table, what you'll notice is that there are actually more red X's than black X's. What that means is uh, there's not much overlap in, uh, but in findings between the tools. So that may, so, uh, so, just speak, so tool 1B found a set of vulnerabilities, and tool 5A found a different set of vulnerabilities. You, you'll also notice that uh, tool 1B, uh, in this case, performed particularly well. Uh, 
so some, some vendors may say, well, my tool finds the most number of vulnerabilities, so we're the best. But if you actually look at the percentages, um, they find about like 50, 65 percent of the vulnerabilities of the known vulnerabilities. So you can't really rely on one tool to, uh, to, to find all your vulnerabilities because if you do, you, you're, you're still missing like 35 percent, 40 percent of the vulnerabilities in your application. So um, let's just go into some exploit cases. Uh, here we have uh, in file error.jsp line number 18, there's actually this parameter and it's just printed out, pr printed out directly um, to a web page. Pretty straightforward vulnerability. They're not doing any kind of uh, output filtering. Uh, to exploit this in, uh, over here, you actually um, put in some scripting text into the URI section of the URL. Uh, now this is kind of difficult for dynamic testing tools to find because uh, to exploit this cross-site scripting vulnerability, you have to put the application in a certain error state. So uh, this is something that actually a, one of the, the, the static tools found. Um, on the, uh, the next vulnerability we have here, uh, viewresponse.jsp line number 31, um, this vulnerability was actually found by all of the tools. So this is a very straightforward vulnerability. You see that uh, there's a hidden field, and in this particular JSP, it prints a raw variable again. Um, path manipulation. Uh, this is actually, again, one of the vulnerabilities that dynamic testing tools have trouble finding. Uh, there may or may not be a signature associated with path manipulation um, when testing over HTTP. Um, in this case, this vulnerability allows an attacker to overwrite an arbitrary file on the file system. And it actually, there's no indication of that sent back through, through the web. Uh, this attack, for this attack, basically, you put in dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, and then some file name. Uh, you include a percent zero, zero at the end for null termination to get, to truncate the dot properties extension. So, and then you can overwrite any file that the web server has permissions to overwrite. Arbitrary URL redirection, this is uh, uh, mainly used for phishing. So what, it, what happens here is that you just put in, you type in any kind of URL uh, into the redirect URL parameter, and then it passes uh, that string to the send redirect method, and that just sets the HTTP response location header, and uh, users can be tricked into going to uh, other sites when they think they're actually going to your site. Um, while verifying the vulnerabilities, actually, I, I noticed there were some vulnerabilities that weren't uh, reported by any of the tools. So. For one of the pages, I actually did a manual code audit, and I found eight additional cross-site scripting vulnerabilities that none of the tools found. So what this means is that uh, you really can't rely on tools themselves to, to perform an extremely th thorough audit. Uh, you really need uh, manual auditing to, uh, to, to make sure your, 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 your code audits are, are thorough. Um, what we see here is actually a pie chart of all the cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. Again, you see tool 1B here. It finds about 55% of the vulnerabilities, uh, cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, but it misses 44, uh, about 45% of all the total cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. Again, you cannot rely on a single tool um, for all of your uh, vulnerability assessments. All right, uh, conclusions. Um, well, Again, single tool doesn't cut it. Using multiple tools dr drastically increases the number of vulnerabilities that you find. Uh, there's actually little overlap um, between the tools, so really you get a greater benefit by running all these tools. Um, tools alone are not enough. Uh, manual audit really does help supplement the, these tools. You really can't rely on the tools to help you find vulnerabilities alone. Um, and, and you really got to run these tests uh, on your own apps to see how these tools will perform. These tools really do perform differently in different environments. Uh, um, in, in my case, the, uh, tool 1B uh, seemed to have performed the best, but in your environment, maybe it would be tool uh, 3A. Uh, and finally, I just want to say fuzzing tools break shit. Uh, I mean, when I ran these dynamic testing tools, uh, I had to reconfigure, re-scan the applications several times. It took hours and days uh, to basically scan these applications. So if you want to reproduce these experiments on your own, don't expect uh, uh, these tests to be quick. And that's it. Thanks. Any questions? Uh, go ahead.
Um, the question was, what type of vulnerabilities were most difficult for these tools to detect? Well, on the dynamic side, um, things like path manipulation where uh, vulnerabilities actually didn't exhibit any kind of uh, behavior over HTTP. Th those were really difficult for those pen testing tools to find. Um, the dynamic testing tools did excel in finding things like cross-site scripting, say, just because uh, that's, the, that's what they're designed for. Um, the static tools actually had tr tr trouble finding um, certain con understanding certain constructs in, in the code, uh, and um, so it, was, it, it missed certain things because of that. Right. I use well. I use. I I used a couple of the market leading uh, web pen testing tools. Let's put that. Sure. I, I think you'll need to contact my employer, and they'll answer that question for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good question. So it, say we were, we were able to fix all the vulnerabilities that the tool found, how long would it take for the, ne the hacker to find the next one? That's, that, that's a, my guess. Uh, in, in this case, actually, it, for this specific application, it would be pretty quick, actually. I, I, I've, I think there are a lot of vulnerabilities that were not detected by any of the tools, but that's for this application in particular. Good. Um, there were some, but they were insignificant. Um, they did not uh, hinder me in, in, in verification of results or anything like that, which was surprising to me. Um, maybe like one out of 30 or something like that. In type. The question was, what type of features would I recommend vendors to add to these packages? Um, I think verification, uh, something to assist in verification of, the, of what they report, um, just to make so that you can validate that the results that they're reporting are, are actually true. <laughs> the question was, how do you get these tools to detect cross-site request forgery? Um, actually, we're running out of time. There, we can talk more in the Track 1 QA breakout room. I'll be uh, across the room over there. <laughs>